yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. This is Dr. Cavell with Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. But as you see, we have visiting clinical professor, A.D. Drew, on to bring it hot and heavy. How are you doing today, Drew? I'm doing fine, my brother, doing fine. And uh, my question of the day is, I did some extra homework uh, over the weekend, Doc. Uh, and I like it. I extra credit. Know, extra credit. I, what I need to know is, is my grade high enough now so that I test out of the final, or do I need to go back and do a little bit more research? No, you, you're pretty close there. We're pretty close there. We got one more test, one more test in the season. Uh, you do well on this last test, and you actually, you will be exempt from the final. You will be exempt from the final. Appreciate it. Uh, not too many students get that in the class now. So, you know, you high on the ranking in that graduate level class you got going on. With that, welcome to episode 208 of Inside HBCU Sports Live Radio Show and Podcast, as I should say. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU diaspora, all things HBCU sports, institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Kaville, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. As you see, they're out on assignment, but we're filming from our home studios and send a signal live to KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC, THC agents to a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. As we jump off in here, man, the coaching cycle is moving fast and furious. As we kind of talked before we came in here off the air, I didn't really see a lot of change in the SIEC, but most people were thinking, if anything, it would be uh, roughing. Moving on for Miles College to see if he can get up and take an FCS level. But we've also learned that Clark Atlanta has departed uh, with uh, Dr. Lynn Dawson moving forward and actually relieving Tim Bowens of his duties after a 2-18 and 18 stint. Started off 0-10 his first year. This is actually his third year. So pretty much uh, any contract he'd had probably over three years is gone. Obviously, he lost the 20, um, 20 season, if you would. Due to the pandemic, no games were played in the SC, SIC for most of the teams. Certainly no conference games. A couple of teams played a game here and there, but few and far between. But he's out. So I'm going to ask you, as I did going into, you know, his previous president, president at Miles College, people didn't really think about this when you think about Ruffin, is now the president at Clark Atlanta University. Is he seeking to move him over? Is he telling Dr. Lawson, Dawson, I should say, is he saying, hey, you got to make this move. I want to win over here at Clark Atlanta. When his eyes at Miles, I was used to winning. I'm not winning over here at Clark Atlanta. What's the problem? What are your thoughts? Is well, that a lateral move? Can you see that being realistic? Obviously, the money would have to be on the table. Or is he more in line for the Alabama State job, which we know is essentially open as you got the interim coach there? What are you reading in the tea leaves? Obviously, the Alabama State job is probably a more attractive job for a resident rougher because, number one, Alabama State has, uh, at one point in time, had the best facility in the SWAC when they opened up their new facility. They're still in the upper half as far as facilities within the, within the SWAC conference, number one. Number two, 
it's a natural recruiting bed because he's already used to recruiting the same type of athletes at Alabama State to be going at. He's just moving a couple hours down the road. But when you think about the Atlanta market, that's that's those same two hours from Birmingham to Montgomery as it is from Birmingham that's to it. Atlanta. That's Very the true. Market. And as you as we was you were sitting there talking about it, I got to thinking. Okay, number one, will Clark pay a Reginald Ruffin the money he's making as a head coach and athletic director just to be head coach? That's question number one. Then number two, I, I go back to something that you've already said. That Atlanta market is a hot market and it would behoove the SWAC and or the MEAC to get into that Atlanta market. So a move for Reginald Ruffin to that Atlanta market is that the precursor to one of those, to the Clark Atlanta team being that team in the Atlanta market for our Division One HBCU. When you sit back and think about it like that, it looks like a lateral on the surface, but it could be the precursor to something different. And I swear, Doc, that just came to me as you were explaining some of the things that were going on out there. In that case, it is an excellent move by Clark Atlanta. Man, I like the way you think, and that's what I ask when you talk about doing your homework assignment, and that's why you are seeking to be exempt from the final exam. Analysis like that gets you exempt from the exam. Let's give a shout out to the listeners out there before we go further and ask you for some of the news on your mind. Jonathan Hernandez, Joey Jackson's in the house, Ayana Lee, Nick Bridges, T. Foster, class now in session. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Eric Evans, Karen Griffin, class time. Yes, ma'am. Wendell Davis, Chris Tucker, shout out to these individuals. Jimmy Wilson, Willie Alex Hine, always in the house. Jalen Riley, Ricky Burton. Yes, we in the lab, baby. That's right. Mary Allen. I see you. I see you. We in the big time. G Boom Holly, Daryl Terrell is in the house. Jamie Walker's up here. That's horrible. That entire roster is young, coming off the COVID year. Yes, very true. It's tough, tough business. Dwight Moore says, good evening, Dean and Professor A.D. That's right, that's right. Jerome G. Sutton, I know he's getting ready for the big Florida Classic down his way, uh, not just for the game, but the battle of the bands at halftime. We'll get into that in our second segment. We'll get into my band marching sport Paul Ranky and we have a guest coming in to give their analysis another band director I mean drum major I should say uh, so it'll be interesting to see what she has to say yes I said she with that being said let me go back to you Professor Drew what are some other hot news that's out there today that you want to get into well let's let's give the lady some love uh Dr. Cavill uh, like Stripe volleyball like tournament is going on this this weekend. Jackson State comes in as the number one seed, while my Florida A and M Rattlers come in as the number two seed. Jackson State with fifteen to one. We all you may or may not know who that one was to. That one was to the Rattlers as they split this season. So uh, you know, go, gonna be fun, hot and heavy up there in Huntsville. Alabama uh, tournament starts on tomorrow, goes through goes through Sunday. You know, I definitely plan on watching the final on ESPN Plus at 3 o'clock. Uh, don't know if that's Eastern time or Central time on Sunday, though. I know it's 3 o'clock. Yeah, it's usually I'll be Central ready at 3 o'clock Eastern. And if yeah. not, I'll come back at 3 o'clock Central. There you go. I like the attitude. That's how you do it. This is one of the times where – you know, being associated with the Texas programs, Texas Southern Tigers as an eight seed, Prairie a and Panthers as a seven seed, this is one of the times where I'm not really looking for the upset. Just because of the robbery that's been on the gridiron now, all the noise talk coming in the season, there was a little noise talk with uh, Brian uh, talking about Jackson State, anybody else going to play volleyball. Then you get the first matchup with Jackson knocks fam you down. Fam, you get a little revenge at home on the second matchup. This is one of the ones where I would love to see the number one and number two seed play each other in the championship round. I do must say those 
three and four seeds, Alabama State, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, they're tough. Not quite as good over the season as Jackson State uh, or FAMU. I believe Alabama State got that upset over FAMU, or it might have been Pine Bluff, but that's where FAMU got its second loss. Um, and so those could be intriguing matchups in the second round, if you would, in terms of the semifinal. So I'm curious about what that may look like, but we shall see in terms of what's going on. Let's jump over and get into the MIAC and give the women on that side some love. When you have your top eight teams uh, going in there, in terms of Howard as the number one seed, you have South Carolina State as the number eight seed. Um, you have number two seed as Delaware State, and the number seven seed is Morgan State. You have three seed as Coppin State versus the number six seed, Norfolk State. And the four or five matchup is North Carolina Central versus five, Maryland Eastern Shore. That tournament also starts on Friday, and it ends on 7. It is listed as an 8 p.m. ESPNU, ESPN3. That's out of the East Coast time zone, so I'd imagine that 8 o'clock is Eastern. So you're talking about 7 o'clock Central, but it's another one of those, as you said. Tune in at 7, and then you can make sure you catch it Central time zone. If not, you can tune back in at 8, but I'm pretty sure it's a 7 o'clock um, matchup, if you would, in terms of volleyball. Interesting to see. Wanted to give the ladies some love. Clicking back to you, AD. We have a little more time before we get in our first break. Any other news that you wanted to jump out there and put uh, on the floor for discussion and dialogue in the lecture lab as we get it going? Yeah, the greatest basketball conference in America. Yes, I said in America, and I'm not talking about the ACC. I am <laughs> talking about the C I double A. You know they. CIAA is back in the basketball business. Well, what what more do we really need to say other than the CIA the CIAA is back in the basketball business? Virginia State went two and zero. Saint Aug, Bowie, Claflin, zero and two. Everyone everyone else split over over the weekend. But man, uh, it, CIAA basketball. I I just can't get it out my mouth crisp enough and i am so looking forward to see what happens at the end of the season with the tournament in baltimore especially if you get a uh, virginia state a union lincoln or a uh, Bowie state one of those northern teams that make a deep run either on the men's or the women's side in that ciaa tournament up there in baltimore yeah the ciaa is something Great. special it's in baltimore so it's gonna be fascinating to see what that looks like post COVID. Um, as you didn't get the tournament last year. But talking about um, basketball, the round ball, if you would, we had a CIAA SIEC match going back to Atlanta with Clark Atlanta. Winston-Salem State took it to Clark Atlanta and got that head-to-head -head as you talk about the CIAA basketball being strong. They shorted it on the hardwood this year, so it'll be interesting. I'll give you a little one going back to the women's side. You did have a matchup with Miles, who was predicted to win the regular season. Uh, certainly that division, getting a chance to give Ever Waters, who's looking to make the move, a taste of the medicine, and they really jumped on them pretty hard and heavy. So it's just fascinating when you talk about all the moves and the matches that's taking place here. A lot going on as we start to turn the clock. We find out who's going to earn some championships in football. We've already seen it at the Division Two level uh, between the CIAA and the SIEC football champions. They're in the playoffs. So we get a chance to talk about that in the second half of the show. We'll take a little deeper dive and get Professor Drew's thoughts on that. We're told those playoff games. He gave us some lessons on Tuesday about why they are uh, in the tournament and where they're seated and why some teams such as Savannah State didn't get in. But we'll talk more about really the gridiron this time, I promise. And then we'll get into some of those major matchups. So want to talk about that. Did want to give a little more news before we take this break. NFL to host second annual Madden NFL 22 uh, by HBCU tournament. That should be fascinating. That tournament will be held December the 3rd um, with limit slots for online single elimination qualifier tournament. And then on December 5th with the top 16 finalists advancing to compete in the NFL Madden by HBCU showcase during Super Bowl week in Los Angeles. That should be good. Players can register to complete compete in the tournament, I should say, at hbcutournament.edu 
hbcutournament.nfl.com. Again, that's hbcutournament.nfl.com. If you're interested in that, check that out. Get it done. Well, and see a great HBCU representation there. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. We'll be back with the marching sports. Stay with us, and we'll give you the top ten and see what things happen. We had that big matchup between Southern and in Jackson State, the Sonic Boom of the South and the Human Jukebox. We'll see who came out on top this week. Let me know your thoughts. We'll be right back after this quick break. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slowburn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge, it's an environment and an experience rich in history luxury and personality an elegant extension of any celebration occasion it's the perfect escape and meeting place a space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion have slow burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com but if they want to tap, uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. As you know, they're out on assignment. So I have the visiting Professor A.D. Drew in. And we have our guest of the week that's going to help me analyze what she thinks about my marching sports poll ranking, the top 10 for week number 11. That is none other than Shanetta Askell, as she is part of 1876 Sports and Culture, former drum major at Caribbean and m University of March of Storm. So let's bring it up. Without further ado, as you know, let me know your thoughts on my marching poll ranking. We'll get your chance to get in and say what you do. You are an expert more than me. But as everybody knows, the difference in my poll or the poll that I do is the fact that there's winners and losers. This is marching sport, HBCU marching sport. So we don't have time for all these fan polls where they go into a certain market and see who they can rise up to see the vote a team or band the highest, and I call it the team because it's a marching sport, right? right? No, we have matchups. Zero quarter. Halftime. The fifth quarter. Somebody wins, somebody loses. That's just what you do in a sport. So let's get into it. The top ten and see what you think as we get into our marching sport. We have those receiving votes. Nobody drops out this week. So in terms of the top 10, not a lot of changes at the bottom, but we'll run through it. North Carolina a and the Blue and Gold Marching Machine, they're 2 and one They haven't had a lot of contests. They moved out to the Big South, so they only had a couple of times where they played HBCUs. You had a couple of weeks ago where you had North Carolina a and and South Carolina State. North Carolina a and did win that battle in terms of the Blue and Gold Marching Machine, so they come in at 2-1. and one. 
At number nine, you have Alabama State, Mighty Marching Hornets. They're three and two, one and two. They probably had some of the closest contests. They got a little bit of house when they went to FAMU, went down to uh, add another matchup in Jackson State. Two of what many people believe are the better bands across HBCU landscape, certainly in the SWAC. They held their own, but they sit at number nine and three and two, one and two in terms of what they they did in terms of conference matchup. At number eight, you have Prairie Man and the Marching Storm, two and one uh, in terms of conference, two and one. As you see, they only have conference marks to match up. They did not participate early in the season in the Houston National Battle of the Bands where we took the top four teams. They got wins of bottom four bands. They got losses because, again, we do wins and losses. Haven't had a lot of matchups, so they sit at number eight. At number seven, Parkour State, the sound of dynamite band. This team, some people, is an enigma. Some people say they're on it. Some people say it's a matchup. I want to see your thoughts maybe on this one. Three and one, two and one on the season. At number six, surprising a lot of people and really getting it done is Kentucky State, mighty marching thoroughbreds. They've taken it to the SIAC, three and oh in those matchups, but they had a couple of non-conference matchups. Probably had the biggest upset this year when they took it to Tennessee State, the aristocrats, five and oh, surprising a lot of people in that matchup. That's your... Bottom five in the top ten. Let's go to see where it really is supposed to be great. The top five, Bethune, Cookman, the Marching Wildcats are hanging on to the fifth spot. They keep losing points because they're just not having enough fan matchups. They do sit at 2-0 and oh in those matchups. And then we go to number four, Norfolk State, the Spartan, Legion Marching Band. Surprising a lot of folks. They sit at 4-1, and 2-0. and oh. Got a big uh, matchup where they took out Delaware State. Some people says the competition is not there. Some people says it's probably one of the best bands that you never have seen. They got a lot of house when they came to Houston, snuck out of here with the W in terms of finishing top four. With that being said, getting into the top three, the cream, the creme for a lot of folks we have getting in here is none other than Jackson State, the sonic boom of the South, five and two, three and two. They took the L. Some people said not so fast. That's just how the folks voted. Losing all the first place votes in that prime time matchup, they stay at number three. Fan you to marching 100, a 4 and 1, 2 and 1. They took the loss to Southern a couple of weeks ago, but they stay in at number two, three first place votes, 84 points. They did give Jackson State that loss earlier, but this is a long season. Bring us to number one, Southern, the human jukebox. They just keep churning it out. They did the little Dance there at the end. It surprised a lot of folks. Got a little house, made it interesting, and they got it done with the dub. 7 0, 5 0 in the conference race. Football team not doing so well, but the band is holding up their <laughs> side of the ball. Five first place wants 9 0, 90 points. Remain number one after a tough matchup, taking on some of the best bands in the land. They get it done. Let me go to our guest. Shanetta, what do you think of the marching sport? Now, remember, we want to bring you back. <laughs> no, just kidding. Do what you do. Break it down. No, no. no. no it, it does. It, you, you, I will say you have some bands on that I have, I'm have. i not seen this season, but I have heard. Um, I do. It does break my heart to have my beloved Prairie View in the, in the bottom five. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't surprise me that Southern is sitting at the top. Um this year alone, I would still say that my favorite band is Jackson State. Um, I think Southern, you know, sometimes I wonder if a lot of it is just hype and if, if it's there. They're not resting on their laws. I'm not saying that by any means. But I just think, you know, it, are they really that good or is it just, We've just come to love Southern, right? Now, with, fair. yeah. With, with that said, you know, to me, you cannot beat Southern simply because of the power of the. I mean, it's 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 pretty much all brass, so you just can't beat their sound. Now, what you can beat is song selection. You can beat arrangement, and I haven't seen too many other than Jackson State beat that this year. Okay? Mm. About the arrangements of the songs and the song selections. But I think that um, you have Bethune Cookman on there. They're, they're a sleeper for me. I think a lot of people were so excited when they talked about 
FAMU and, and Bethune Cookman joining the SWAC and so much of the attention was on FAMU that I just don't think people paid much attention to Bethune Cookman. But you know me, I love tradition. And Bethune has this signature move that they always do. And to, to me, I've always said, take any of these marching bands, you put them in a white uniform, and their fans should know that's my band. Mm. And I love the fact that I know that with Southern, I know that with Jackson State, even Grambling. They see Grambling on your pole or, or Texas Southern. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of swag hating, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it is cool. But no, I do. I think I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of North Carolina a and I can see why they're at the bottom simply because of how you are ranking these, having to have that competition. But I'm a, I'm a lover of old school. Anytime I listen to North Carolina a and I know they're going to give me that fix. Um, but kudos to all the bands this season because a lot of them are taking us back to old school and, and making us, for me, fall in love with marching bands again because it is. In recent years, I kind of started, they were playing too much of this new school where I didn't get the the mm. ring, full band sound, the chords. You know, there's more to a song than a bass line. And so um, I really like what I'm seeing just this season alone with, with, with marching bands. And so as far as your poll, again, I still think that PV should be ranked higher. Um, but who, if you ask anyone, I think right now Southern Jackson State would be a toss up. So, mm. yeah. So before I go to AD Drew and get his take on this, Drew, I want you to think about this and then you can break down the poll. Eric Evans says Kentucky State 4 and 0, but not in the top five. He doesn't get it. So that's an interesting point. White Moore says, yes, the juke has been the standard. Thanks, Doc. You made us earn it week to week, so some thoughts about this. But I wanted to ask you, Shanetta, this follow-up before I go to Professor Drew, is you mentioned Southern and Jackson State. I have FAMU, the Marching 100 at two. You didn't say much about them. Would you have Jackson State ahead of FAMU? Yes. What are your thoughts in terms of that, and why uh, would you have FAMU bump down a little bit? I saw you said that Prairie View should probably be in the top five. Certainly mm -hmm. understand that. You have some appreciations for all these bands. And I thought that was unique, the way you broke that down. But why would you have Jackson State over FAM? So just for this, this particular season, I have just, I've watched a few of FAMU shows and I've watched a few of Jackson State shows. I pretty much watched all Jackson State shows. Um, and to me, it's just overall entertainment value. I, I, I can't mm. down as far as musicianship, um, song selection, because I think they're both doing well. I think they're both, and it could be swag. I'm used to Jackson State. I like their tradition. I love to hear JSU rocks the house. I love the drum majors when they do get ready. So I'm just more excited when I see Jackson State. Um, I've seen FAMU. I mean, I, I marched under a band director that graduated from FAMU. So I mm -hmm. respect Exactly. I highly respect what they do. Um, as far as that fast cadence, to me, they're the best ones that's doing it, period. I really wish a lot of bands would stop doing it and let just, just let them you do it. They do it right. Um, but for me, it's just <laughs> that entertainment value for me that Jackson State is giving. Um, I love it. Great stuff. Always, go ahead. I always tell people I'm not a fan of Jackson State's drum major style, all the bouncing, but I still love it because it's what they do and they do it so well. But I really I like the way that you, you break down on tradition because I think that's important for folks uh, when they look across HBCU bands and really start to understand um, the importance of it and the uniqueness of it and how do you recognize uh, bands for who they are and what they are over a period of time. Drew, I want you to get in here and either uh, break down your thoughts in terms of my top 10 or I teased out there a little bit about Kentucky State maybe should be in the top five either one of those thoughts take it away but number one I do agree Kentucky State should be in the top five I think that there should be two teams three teams that should not even be in the poll and I'm going Ooh. to tell you why it's week 10 we're going on week 11 doc I think these bands should have marched at least have had at least four matchups by doc including one on the road that is not a classic, that's not a neutral site classic. You need to go march in someone else's house 
at this point in time in the season. We've got a couple of bands on this list who have not done that now. That's so fair. I think, I, like I think you should have a good it is qualification. Are you going to be in a marching sport? No march. Exactly. Especially, you got to go on the road. You got to beat it, it, in the basketball pole, the football pole. Road victories count. Some of these bands don't have a road victory because they don't have a road game at this point in time <laughs> in the season. That that's That's number one. Number two, bro, where's the BAC at? I mean, is is the swag that good to be act that bad? Oh, what? Where is uh, Miak? I need y'all to step up and try to get in this poll. Y'all not even in the receiver votes. We got Norfolk and everybody else. I know everybody left the Miak, but I thought the bands were still around. So where you at, Miak? I need you to I need you to step, get on your game and get and get things going in that conference. And then we're gonna have to clip that. We're gonna have to make that a clip. <laughs> and then number three you know it, 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 it's classic week so you know I, I have no love for Bethune this week I just want I just want to put that out there you know I, I have no love for Bethune this week it's classic week for us in the state it's of personal. Florida I understand but it's, it's family but it's personal it's personal <laughs> but the, the one thing I will say this is a little sidebar off of the poll you know I've had the luxury of going to what I call the two Two of the greater band schools in the nation. FAMU, arguably one of the best show bands that we have out there. You put them out there on the green iron at halftime, they are going to give you a top-notch show. Southern took on, has taken on FAMU, has taken on Jackson State. They deserve to be number one. But I also went to another school that they had this uh, little smaller band called the Washington Crimson Pipers, who may be probably the best stand band that we have around. You know, for me, I just wish I had a combination of both of them. The great show on the field and that great stand band, because I've been a part of both universities with both of those. I'm going to leave that open for discussion. Oh, I love it. Great points. Great points. Shanetta, I'm going to give you the last word before we get into the break. You know, it's funny that he talks about the Crimson Pipers. We're talking about the ski. And... You know, you, you and you are right. I love that ball in parlay. But, Doc, if you remember a few weeks ago, I made a comment about that because mm -hmm. I, you, you, go, you, you go to YouTube right now and you, you Google, I'm, I'm not, you search ball in parlay to ski. I love how hype the, uh, the crowd, the, the fan, I love that. What I don't like is the sound of the band. I have yet to hear a clip where it sounds like, to me, a, a college band. Hmm. Interesting. That's because they, they filled it with an Android, not an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. That's the, that's the right one there. thing I, 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 was like, I love. I've seen it because I mean, I've, I've never seen another, what do y'all call it, the shed? Like, they are hype under that thing. It is, it's amazing to watch. I love it. But every time I'm listening to it, I'm just like, oh, but the, if the band... Could blow like Southern, or, or, or I'm gonna throw my PV or my Jackson State in there. That would be top notch to me. But no, you. I love, I love the tease. I love the tease. This is a great <laughs> conversation. Let's go to the break. We're gonna have to cut it here and come back and talk a little bit about the football on the field in action. Thank you for your time and giving us uh, some guests and some uh, analysis on the marching sport. And you'll be welcome back. Great analysis. Great analysis. You, you did a great job. Let's take it out. We'll be right back after this quick break. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Carlos Brown, letting you know that we're on the move. You can now catch the Carlos Brown Show beginning this July on the Black College Sports Network each and every Saturday from 11 to 1 Eastern Time. That's 10 to 12 Central Time. Same time, new place. On Facebook at the Carlos Brown Show and Black College Sports Network. Online at www.mybcsn.net. And on the BCSN app, available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. 
For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lot. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, sitting in as the visiting professors, none other than Professor Drew. You just got finished listening to Chanel High School of 1876 Sports and Culture breaking it down and taking analysis of the HBCU marching sport top 10 poll ranking in week number 11. Uh, you can catch her on the 1876 Sports and Culture podcast, doing a great job breaking down Prairie View analyst as she is a former drum major of the marching storm. With that, let's get back on the great iron and get into it. We're going to get into the playoffs, the Division two playoffs. Yes, playoffs. Practice? No, playoffs. Bowie State Bulldogs earned the number two seed in NCAA Division II playoffs. We'll host Lenore Ryan in the first round. Let's get right to it. You got Lenore Ryan coming in at 8-2, and 6-2, and two, and they're on the road at number one Bowie State Bulldogs. 7 and 0. What's your thoughts on this matchup? I mean, Bowie was one of the top scoring defenses in the, in the nation. You know, you Bowie, heard I believe, the top scoring defenses. I like that. Top scoring defense. I believe their defense has accounted for six or seven touchdowns on this season. Now, keep in mind, we're not talking about setting them up with a short field. We're talking about pick sixes, fumble sixes that they've taken back to the house wow. uh, this particular season. So, and Bowie's going to need that defense in order to uh, to do what they do because Lenore Ryan has the number nine offense in the nation. So Bowie's defense is, 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 is strength on strength going into this matchup. You know, the, the good thing about that is Bowie State's offense is a heck of a lot better uh, when, when match, match it up against the North Ryan's defense. Bowie has a top 30 defense, I mean, excuse me, offense, where Lenore Ryan's defense is not in the top 50. So Bowie has the advantages. If that Bowie defense could turn Lenore Ryan over uh, once or twice, Bowie should win this game going away. Yes, I said, Bowie should win this game going away, especially if they can get it themselves a defensive touchdown. No doubt about it. Who you got coming out of it? Uh, this game? Yep. Oh, I I I got to roll with the Bulldogs, man. I, I'm, I got it. I you know, see you I, I, going that I'm way. Gonna I'm going to do like old Tom Joyner. I'm always going black. <laughs> I like it. Well, we're going to take the next one and see if you stay black. Albany State football earns number four seed in the NCAA Division II playoffs. will host West Georgia uh, in the first round. So this is an interesting matchup with West Georgia. Also coming in 8-2, and 5-2 and two in the conference record. Versus number two in our poll ranking, Albany State Golden Rams, 10 and 1 on the season, 6 and 0 coming out of the SIC. I know you're going to stay black. That's just the way it is. But in terms of this matchup, what are your thoughts on it? And then tell me who you have. Once again, this is a. Uh... This is this is a clash of styles. West Georgia wants to uh, throw the ball all over the field. We know Albany State does not give up anything. They give up the sum total of what five points on defense. So you know this yeah. is once again a a great clash of of styles right here. Mm -hmm. Now West Georgia number eighteen scoring offense against the number one scoring. Defense, who's going to win, yin or yang? What well, Albany State has their advantage at is the way they rush the ball. Mm. You know, Albany State, one of the top uh, in rushing offense in the nation. West Georgia, number 74 against the run. So let's think about that. Number 74 out of uh, 160 teams, they're smack dab in the middle. 
They're, they're, they're average. They're mediocre. Whatever adjective you want to use. If Albany State can play defense, run the ball, keep it away from that West Georgia offense, Albany State wins by uh, two scores. I like it. Eric Evans says, I need Bowie and Albany State to hold it down for HBC so D2 respects Albany the State wants Valdosta term. again. That's what it's coming down yeah, to. Albany State wants Valdosta that. right. on a dry field this time without the, the two-hour rain delay. They think they can get them. Oh, I like it. I like it. Ricky Burton says, going to my first Soul Bowl this week before I hit the Bayou Class next weekend. Charles, let's just show you, boy, a good time. I'll make sure Charles get that. He needs to show you a good time as he's in there. He'll be doing a little work, but before that, he should be able to show you a good time. Are they Speaking still calling about it that, the Soul Bowl? Huh? Or did they change it to the – Well, Soul Bowl is the old name, so I'm just using what they is, and I was trying to jump in that it is the SWAC Classic as you talk about it now. Uh, which that will move around. That's what classic name will go to event to event. So you'll see that uh, throughout the season next year. Great points you make there. But let's stick with that. Let's stick in the swag and give you a little bonus. Obviously, you had those two matchups. So usually we give you the independent and major classic matchup at the Division Two. But other than the playoffs, those teams are not playing now. So let's get into some of this. And let's give you a major classic matchup which will be a top five matchup. You got Jackson, Mississippi, Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. SWAC, in terms of this week, it's going down. That is November the 20th, 1 o'clock, ESPN 2. You have number five, Auckland State Braves, 64, 5, and 2. At number one, Jackson State Tigers, 9 and 1, 7, 0. Can Auckland up in a regular season, undefeated season for Jackson State in terms of the conference rates? Auckland State Braves obviously needs the victory to force Prairie View to do what they have to do next week against Mississippi Valley State. They're still in the hunt. So this is a big-time matchup, big-time rivalry. Uh, Jackson State wants to get over the hump and really reclaim what they think they need to do in terms of being at the top of the Eastern Division. Alcorn State says, no, we're not finished yet, but we want to do it in the West. That's enough of that. Drew, what are your analysis on this? Can they? Yes, they can. Should they? No, they shouldn't. But have we uh have we heard the final outcome from last week as far as uh any players possibly lost by Jackson State and Southern because of the clash at the end of the game? No, I haven't heard anything. I was surprised at that I got some wind that they told the institutions, but nothing publicly. So I'm intrigued about that. But at this point, if it's not out there, if it's something was done it has to be minuscule and maybe it was almost like a fine and not anything they could show or really catch I think there was one person that you heard them mention and we'll have to see but nothing released as of yet but uh all right so getting back to that no all coins can beat them they should not beat them Jackson State has the better team on paper but I've got to go back with what I said back in late July, early August, Doc. I said every SWAC team will have a loss. There's only one team out there who doesn't have a loss yet, and that's Jackson State. Wow. So Alcorn is going to do whatever they can to stay in control of their destiny. Alcorn is going to pull out the, the trick play of the trick play against Jackson State. Can Jackson State stay disciplined enough? Can Jackson State get that run defense uh, well enough? And can Jackson State's offensive line protect Shadour Sanders well enough? Because if Jackson State plays like they played against Southern, Alcorn will win this game going away. Wow. Somebody said that T. Foster said, AD, one and one in picking upsets last week. What do you got? He just told you he got Alcorn State. Dwight Moore has the question, who hosts SWAC championship if Alcorn beat best Jackson State and Valley beats Prairie View? Uh, in that case, it would still would go, go back to, to Jackson, should it? it go with Jackson because Alcorn would have two conference losses while Jackson State would have one. So it would go back to Jackson, Mississippi. If uh, Jackson beats Alcorn and Prairie View, it still stays in Jackson, Mississippi with Prairie View going to Jackson. So either way, Jackson has secured home field advantage in terms of what they've done, regardless of the outcome. 
that takes place with Prairie View. I like what uh, Silas Edward McMorris says, Valley is not beating PV. Y'all can get all excited about this Mississippi stuff. It's not I, happening, I'll but A.D. Drew I'll says, he's I'll called Connor that. Set, so it'll be interesting. Great Thursday evening, Lab Fanatics, late again, Falcons traffic, no problem, we understand it. We're just glad to have you in here. G. Boom Holly says, football tiebreaker rules. Yes, we have the breakdown of tiebreaker rules. Um, it's still, uh, in this case, would be the first one, which is just head-to-head -head matchups. So um, in this case, though, the first one is who has the best overall conference records. If Alcorn beats Jackson State, Jackson State would fall to 7-1 and one in the conference. Uh, Alcorn would go 6-2. and two. In your case, Prairie View would also be at 6-2 and two, since Valley, in your analysis, would beat them in terms of what the guy asked. But Alcorn would have the head-to-head -head over Prairie View. Um, so they would represent the West. Jackson State would be 7-1 and one versus a 6-2. Obviously, they would control the East, but they would have the home field advantage because they would have the best record. If it goes the other way with uh, Jackson State coming out 8-0, and oh, meaning that Prairie View would clinch regardless of what would happen in that matchup uh, because that would mean Braves would fall to 5-3. and three. So even if Prairie View went to 6-2 and two or stayed at 7-1, and one, they would win the West, uh, but they would still have to travel to Jackson in case of the scenario that you have there. So just hopefully that clears it up with you uh, in terms of what takes place there. Let's get into – uh, our next break, we'll be right back on the other side and talk about a couple more major division matchups for this week in week number 11. Stick with us as we'll be right back on the other side with Professor Drew. As we're waiting to get into the break here, let's do this. Give you a little bonus action. We have Greensboro, uh, Big South matchup. Garner with their Bulldogs at three and seven, one and five. At number seven, North Carolina A&T State Aggies at five and five, three and three on the season. Um, I do want to get the matchup. Can the Aggies get out of this rough season with a winning record? Uh, do you think they get it done against Garner Webb, especially at home for the seniors, Professor Drew? Well, if if there's anybody in the Big South that they should beat, it's just going to wear a Bulldogs team. You know, A&T, a disappointing for A&T standards, but, uh, you know, com coming off that victory against South Carolina State where they've, they've gone in a little bit of momentum, yes, I see A&T going out with a 6-5 record. Hey, learning curve. You're in a brand. You're in a brand new environment. You know, Doc. You moved into a new neighborhood. You got new neighbors, and you have not figured out what the uh, HMA rules are for your particular area. So, you know, that's what this season has kind of been like for A and T. They they don't even know what the HMA meeting is. Uh, it it in, in that new conference. So they're trying to get everything uh worked out. But I do think A and T finishes six and five and does what they need to do to go ahead and secure a winning season. Good deal. Let's see if we can go to break and then come back. This is Dr. Ville inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson, Charles Bishop. Let's see if we can go right to the break and we'll come back and talk about the other side. With that, we'll be right back after this break. As they say, maybe like, not. Let's stick with it. Let's like stick we have with some it. technical difficulties, so we just going to keep it rolling, Doc. Yep, let's go with it. Let's go yeah. to the big matchup. I know okay. one that you really want to talk about a little bit. We have number two, Florida a and at Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. It's actually a neutral site classic game, the Florida Classic, Florida Blue, Florida Classic, if you would. Orlando, Florida, Camping World Stadium. FAMU comes in at 8-2, and 6-1. At Bethune Cookman, two and eight, two and five. Fam, I mean Bethune Cookman Wildcats have won their last two games. Fam, you has won six straight games uh, in terms of their record. They're fighting for a playoff bid in some people's minds. Some people says it doesn't matter. This is on ESPN three. Uh, this is a big time matchup. Can Fam, you break the streak? Is one of the biggest things out there outside of the playoff bid. Ad Drew, what are your thoughts on this? 
Can fam you break the streak? Yes. Should fam you break the streak? Yes. Will fam you break the streak? Yes. But boom, y'all getting too big for y'all britches. Y'all the world y'all say it was two in a row, and y'all think y'all doing a little something something over there. Y'all will not spoil our playoff bid this year over there in Daytona Beach, Florida. I just want all my Bethune people to know that we gonna get we gonna get to the playoffs. We gonna get on a run in the playoffs, and we go we gonna bring the debate once again. Remember twenty nineteen, who was number one, Fab U or A or A and T? We're going to bring that debate again because Fab, you'll get on the run in the playoffs. We're going to make everybody think about who should they vote number one, the Celebration Bowl winner or a Florida a and who makes a run into the in a, uh, FCS playoff. Start thinking about it because it's going to happen. We're going to have to make that decision, Doc. I just want you to, uh, to keep that in mind. I like it. I like it. So you talking about Sunday when I'm on the show, I need to bring out the SlowBurnWaco.com, SlowBurnWaco.com, famous cigar. To salute you and the Rattlers. Talk about it. Ready. All I got to do is unwrap it. <laughs> I love it. I love I will it. Unwrap it. it on Sun. I will unwrap it on Sunday. Yep. It'll be ready. Let it go. Let it go. That's right. But let's move into another Big South matchup. This is the HBCU Independent Non Conference Major Division Game of the Week. It features Hampton, Virginia. This is the Hampton team that beat. Uh, North Carolina A&T surprised a lot of folks, but they still sit at five and five, three and three in the conference rank, ranked number six in the Dr. Bill's inside uh, the HBCU major division poll rankings. They take on North Alabama Lions that sit at two and eight, one and four in terms of the conference race. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Hampton's probably the most inconsistent team that we've seen uh, right now, hence their, hence their 500 record, you know. Hampton has lost games that we thought they should have won. They've beaten teams that we thought they should have lost to. So Hampton should be North Alabama. But given the ups and downs that Hampton has had this season, North Alabama will probably beat them. I hope not, but I'm just kind of going with the trend. Hampton has done everything exactly opposite of what I thought they were going to do this year, game by game. And they liked your HOA analogy. <laughs> With that being said, let's get into the MIAC. Let's do the Norfolk, Virginia, uh, William Dick Price Stadium, 1 o'clock ESPN 3. This was supposed to be a game a couple of weeks ago that was going to determine who was going to go to the Celebration Bowl and win the MIAC, de facto championship game. Not so much now. South Carolina State Bulldogs have wrapped that up with the 5-5 five and five overall record, more importantly, 4-0 and oh in the conference record. Sitting at number eight after a tough loss to North Carolina AT, where they lost a quarterback in the second quarter. So they're without a quarterback for this game. Does that give Norfolk State Spartans at six and four and two and two uh, the enough to get it done for their seniors at home? Or are they still reeling based on the fact that they lost those two previous conference games after being up 20 plus points in both matchups? Uh, both at the half or before the half, can they find a way to bounce back and at least kind of save their season with a big win over South Carolina State Bulldogs? What are your thoughts on this matchup, Professor Drew? Dr. Cavill, I don't know if you were listening to the sports rap where Brian and I coined the newest hashtag. You know, we had hashtag protect your homecoming. Now our new hashtag is MEAC-ish, I-S-H. M-E-A-C- <laughs> I S H. Why do I come up with the hashtag the act ish? Because Norfolk defeats South Carolina State. But South Carolina State represents the BAC in the celebration bowl with a five and six record. BAC South Carolina State is co-champion with a if, if Central wins, they're co-champions with Central at who's at six and five. Both of those teams finish with a worse record than Norfolk, who would be 74, but out of the race. Only in the MIAC does this happen. <laughs> Only in the MIAC. Hashtag MIAC ISH. MIAC ish. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, let's go back a little bit because you talked about Jack State Alcorn. You said. 
2 uh, tickets.com 2 tickets.com You're pulling on the mask, Alcorn State. You're saying they're getting it done. Let me put it on. Well, no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need them to lose. Well, just saying. Uh, obviously, you talked about FAMU, and let me find – but Bethune Cookman, make sure I get it out and represent for them. Oh, wait, don't don't even look for it, Doc. You ain't you can j- just pull out the green, <laughs> the green and orange. Don't even worry about looking for that one. I don't even want to see it. On, oh, uh, why you even put that on camera with with with, with fam? You. I love it. I know it. I know it. But we got this Alabama A and M Pine Bluff game. This is the game that features the two teams that were in the spring championship. Alabama A and M. Both of them didn't have the season they want. A&M a little better than what Pine Bluff is. Pine Bluff comes in this matchup going on the road, 28-1-6. One At number four, Alabama A&M, the Bulldogs, 6-3, and 4-3. and three. Obviously, a lot of this has uh, recruiting on the line, particularly for the Bulldogs, want to go out for their seniors and have a solid uh, season in terms of lease with the winning record and going out in style. But in terms of this matchup, Lewis Cruz Stadium, Huntsville, Alabama, 1 o'clock. What are your thoughts? Who's going to take care of this? game on Saturday. Look, last time a quill glass would be on the, on the hill in, in uh, Huntsville in a uh, Bulldog uniform. Don't be surprised if a quill glass throws about seven touchdowns in this game. He is going to ball out for his last game on the hill. I'm sorry, Pine Bluff. I know revenge is on your heart. You want to avenge the loss from last year in the championship game, but that was last year. That was when we were, we were talking about you. No one's talking about you in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You, you're back to the UAPB that we all have known and loved. No, 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 no offense, but that you're back to the old UAPB, Alabama a and watch, watch out. Uh, Glass may sell some game records in this particular game, and when they pull him out of the game, in the fourth quarter, to that standing ovation, you know, it's 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 going to be great. I did want to ask you before I get into that last swag game of the week, I wanted to backtrack and go to MEAC. Delaware State, they got the big upset last week. They said it 5-5, five and five, North Carolina Central, the Eagles, 5-1, five 5-5 and one, five and five themselves. Um, they have the one conference loss. They want to get a share of the championship, but they would they would need Norfolk State to beat South Carolina State. As we said, South Carolina State has already meackishly uh, created the bowl bid for the Celebration Bowl because they would have the head-to-head record against North Carolina Central, although both of them would be at four and one. Do you, who which one of these teams gets the winning record uh, on the season, finishing out six and five instead of five and six? I, I already told you. I, I'm going with Central just because it's the MEAC. Central, Central is going to win. You know, Delaware State, another one of those teams that's been uh, up and down. They win when they're not supposed to. They lose when they should. They lose when they should win. You know, but you can really, you can really say the same thing about Central. But I think Central has just a little bit of a better team than Delaware State, and they should be able to get it done. Yeah, you got Prairie View, Texas A&M. That's the number 16 BCS, Texas A&M Aggies. Won't really get in that matchup. Real matchup next week for Prairie View is against Valley in terms of Thanksgiving weekend, along with uh, Tuskegee playing at Alabama State, as well as the Bayou Classic with Grambling and Southern. We'll get into that next week. But the last one we do have, we have Texas Southern going on the road against Alabama State. Two programs that desperately want to win. Alabama State wants it for its seniors, special as a great. But you got a new phenom, another quarterback freshman in the league that's uh, doing his own thing, body. Who gets the best? Is it Texas Southern getting the win or is it Alabama State in terms of those teams there? Texas Southern comes in at two and seven uh, and Alabama State comes in at three and six. Two and uh, Tigers are two and five in the conference race as well as Alabama State is two and five. Both of them want to get that elusive next conference win. Who you got in this matchup? I don't think I, I, I'm going to say this. This is not going to be grammatically correct, but nobody in Alabama is going to stop body. So <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I, I like Texas Southern's offense. I really do like Texas Southern's offense. So if they could get a little bit of uh, defense to go there, yeah, exactly. and if Alabama State <laughs> plays uh, like we've seen them play on offense, which we haven't seen, 
if you've seen some games where they haven't done anything on offense, I think Texas Southern can win this game by 20 points easily. So, and like one quick it. thing about Prairie View, Prairie View will have a short week after, after playing a week 11 FBS team. Don't sleep on Valley. Prairie View on a short week to win the SWAC championship. Watch out down there in Texas. Yeah, the only thing I would say about that matchup that makes it stronger, I certainly believe in Valley, but it's evident that they play different at home than they do on the road. Um, they really haven't had a close matchup against a team that has a winning record or is in the championship race on the road. They have played championship teams in terms of FAMU, Jackson State at home, really tough, but it's something different than when they go on the road. Obviously, went to Alabama a and They got beat up there. Very I think real, it's going to be tough bad. in terms of taking a long road trip, going to Prairie View. Prairie View has everything on the line. The Prairie View players feel disappointed, not just because they lost the game in their minds in a lot of ways, not to say it was the case or not, give Grace credit, but they thought that game was taken from them. So they're going to be mad regardless of what takes place against the Aggies this week. Coach already said they're going to be smart about it, so I don't think they're going to play the starters too long. They know the money is on the line. But we'll find out Saturday, even if that game means anything, I know you say you got the Braves, but I think Jackson State is going to play hard. They want to keep that undefeated record. So that one is one to keep your eyes on. As we said, it's top five matchup. Pride of the state, two very good programs, solid coaches in terms of one. One is a championship level coach. Other one is Hall of Famer who's able to get his team motivated, if nothing else, but he showed that he's had some great coaches. T.C. Taylor is the offensive coordinator at Jackson State. He's turned the tide. He's making that offense go as they kind of stumbled a little early, defenses continue to do what they're doing, maybe getting the ball down a little bit, but it'll be fascinating. I think that is certainly the game of the week. and want to keep your eyes on it. That'll do it for us. Thank you for listening to Inside HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Hope you enjoyed it as we had our visiting guest lecture. Professor Drew, that's A.D. Drew, uh, Brian and A.D. of Sports Rap. Check him out. Nice at the round table. And just all around, great producer getting it done in so many different ways. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Check us out on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll give you a wrap up of what took place in terms of HBC Sports for the weekend. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest in the news. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter. That's HBC, Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1. Facebook and YouTube, that's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Drew? Of course. Roy? Lecture? <laughs> Dismissed. Dismissed.